Hello, my name is Jose Fernandez, and today I'll be talking about dengue virus, especially focusing on its history, life cycle and transmission, pathogenesis, and the human immune response to the presence of the virus. Dengue fever, commonly known as breakbone fever, is an acute mosquito-transmitted viral disease caused by the dengue virus 0 types 1 through 4. Dengue infections can result in either an asymptomatic disease in up to 75% of cases or an spectrum of clinical illnesses ranging from self-limited dengue fever to severe dengue, a potentially lethal hemorrhagic and capillary leak syndrome, also known as dengue hemorrhagic fever and shock syndrome. According to the World Health Organization, dengue is the most rapidly spreading mosquito-borne viral disease with an estimated 50 million infections annually and approximately 2.5 billion people living in countries where the dengue virus is endemic. This January and July isotron lines in the map indicate the geographical limits in the northern and southern hemisphere for year-round survival of Aedes aegypti, the principal mosquito vector of the dengue virus. In the last 50 years, incidence of dengue has increased 30-fold. There are many factors that have contributed to this emergence in epidemic dengue, but the three main drivers are urbanization, globalization, and the lack of effective mosquito control. Prior to World War II, the viruses and mosquito vectors depended primarily on ocean-going vessels for transportation. As a result, most tropical regions had at most one or two zero types of the virus in circulation. Dengue epidemics were sporadic with long intervals between them. In World War II, the movement of troops and war materials transported the viruses and the mosquito vector across many areas of the Pacific and Asia. The end of the war brought a surge in economic growth in many Southeast Asian countries and an increase in airline transportation. This served as a catalyst for unprecedented human growth that began in the 1950s and continues today. This coincides with the first documented epidemics of dengue hemorrhagic fever in the Philippines in 1953 to 1954, Thailand 1958, followed by the 1960s in Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Indonesia, and Burma in the 1970s. By the 1980s, dengue hemorrhagic fever had become the leading cause of hospitalization and death among children in many countries of Southeast Asia. In most of the Americas, epidemic dengue was effectively controlled alongside epidemic yellow fever by the Aedes aegypti eradication program that eliminated the mosquito from 23 countries during the 1950s and 60s. When this program was terminated in the 1970s, the mosquito began to reinfest tropical countries in the region. This reinvasion coincided with a drastic increase in human growth. By the late 1970s, dengue viruses began to be introduced from Asia. Serotype 1 was introduced in 1977, followed by serotypes 2 and 4 in 1981 and serotype 3 in 1994. Most likely, multiple strains of each serotype were introduced and all four became endemic, leading to severe forms of dengue disease being reported in 28 countries. The expansion and increase in incidence of epidemic dengue closely correlates with human growth and development. By 2011, the entire tropical world was hyperendemic with multiple serotypes of the virus cross-circulating in most urban centers. Dengue virus is a member of the flavivirus genus of single-stranded positive sense RNA viruses. Film of mosquitoes acquire the virus while feeding on the blood of an infected host. They use the protein and iron found in the blood to make their eggs. Within the mosquito, the virus infects the mosquito's meat gut and subsequently spreads to the salivary glands over a period of 8 to 12 days. After this incubation period, when the mosquito probes during a meal, virus-loaded saliva is injected into the host's extravascular zonal spaces. To efficiently feed, the mosquito must overcome host barriers, including the physiological responses elicited by homeostatic and inflammatory systems. Mosquito saliva contains a potent mixture of secreted molecules that can affect vascular contraction, blood coagulation, platelet aggregation, inflammation, immunity, and angiogenesis. Dengue virus is an RNA virus. Its outer surface is covered with envelope proteins surrounding a protein membrane, a lipid bilayer envelope, and inside the envelope is a caspid containing the 10.7 kilobase RNA genome. Immune cells are targeted by the dengue virus. 
binding of the viral envelope proteins to the cognitive receptor triggers a receptor-mediated endocytosis event, which leads to the virus being internalized in an endosome. The FC receptor is involved in a phenomenon called antibody-dependent enhancement. The virus is then internalized in an endosome. Inside the endosome, proton pumps lower the pH, which promote a conformational change in the envelope proteins of the virus to form spike-like structures. The tips of the spikes are hydrophobic, which allows them to penetrate the endosome's membrane. They bend until the endosome's membrane and the viral membrane fuse together to release the caspid and the RNA into the cytoplasm of the whole cell. The viral RNA is a positive sense strand of RNA that can be directly translated into protein. It forms a structure that binds to the translation initiation proteins, and the whole viral genome is then translated by the ribosome into a single long polypeptide chain. The caspid protein of the polypeptide stays in the cytoplasm of the endoplasmic reticulum while the envelope protein stays in the lumen side of the endoplasmic reticulum, and these proteins are activated by a host peptidase enzyme. These enzymes then rearrange themselves to form the RNA replication complex. The viral RNA form a circle-like structure, which then bind to the replication complex and using the positive sense strand, a negative sense strand is created to create a double-stranded RNA. From this negative sense strand, many positive sense strands are made. Some of them will, will be translated into protein that will be used to make new viruses. The proteins aggregate in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum and the caspid proteins aggregate in the cytoplastic side. The viral RNA binds to the caspid protein and is packaged into a new virus as it bots off into the endoplasmic reticulum. This new virus is still immature and it's covering proteins to prevent premature fusion back into the host cell. The virus goes through the Golgi apparatus as it continues through the cell surface. Before reaching the surface, the premature proteins are processed and the virus becomes mature and is ready to be released from the cell and infect other cells. Acute illness occurs between 0 and 6 days of infection when there is a high viral load in the bloodstream and is characterized by high fever, severe headaches, pain behind the eyes, severe joint and muscle pain, which is why it has the nickname break bone fever, and a skin rash in some cases. As the infection progresses, viremia steadily declines to zero at five days of infection. The concentration of antibodies IgG and IgM in the blood and lymphoid fluid steadily increase beginning on day two of infection. This is the result of viral molecules such as the NS1 protein being recognized. The IgM concentration plateaus between 7 to 14 days and then declines steadily to undetectable levels at around 50 days. IgG concentration reaches its peak at around day 12 and then begins to gradually decline. IgG levels stay relatively high even 50 days after infection. Secondary infection with a different serotype of the virus is the single most important risk factor for severe danger. The mechanisms by which the immune response protects or contributes to the disease is controversial, but the current hypothesis is that a phenomenon called antibody-dependent enhancement of infection if is at play. Essentially, antibodies present from the primary infection bind to the infecting the virus during a subsequent infection with a different serotype, and the antivirus are unable to neutralize the virus, and instead, the antibody virus complex binds to the FC receptors on circulating monocytes. This in turn helps the virus infect said monocytes more efficiently, and the outcome is an increase in the overall replication of the virus and higher risk of severe danger.
Moreover, by no clearly established mechanisms, cytotoxic T cells release excessive quantities of cytokines during secondary infection that promote inflammation and tissue leakage, which possibly contributes to severe dengue disease symptoms. Secondary infection increases the likelihood of going into the stage of hemorrhagic and capillary leak known as dengue shock syndrome or dengue hemorrhagic fever and in more recent literature this is being called severe dengue this is a very devastating condition that is characterized by platelet deficiency encephalitis and hallucination hemoconcentration which is a decrease in plasma volume in relation to red blood cells and this can lead to hematocrit increase of up to 20 percent shock and death the best treatment for dengue at the time of this presentation is prevention. Um, that is, using mosquito repellent, trying not to get exposed to the mosquito uh, by covering the bed with a mosquito net, eliminating the mosquito habitat. And this is really important because the Aedes aegypti mosquito usually doesn't fly more than 400 meters throughout his entire life. Also, the mosquito has this very um, characteristic phenotype is white stripes on its legs there is a vaccine already being used it was licensed in 2015 it's only been licensed in mexico so far and there are there are many other vaccines in in all different stages of development and um, once the person is infected it, there's basically no other option but to just deal with the symptoms as far as an answer questions goes um, the exact mechanisms of the antibody-dependent enhancement of infection remains unclear. Why a uh, platelet deficiency occurs is also a debate. There is some research suggesting that somehow the cells that are infected with the virus produce a coagulant protein that makes the, the platelets stick to them. And these are the sources. Um, I hope you enjoy the presentation and goodbye.